Ladies and gentlemen, get out there, buy some land, build some houses. There's a massive housing crisis. This is the time for you to profit from it. Let's go out and let's get it done. Let's make you some money and make you some money. God bless and let's go out and crush it. Go out and compound your success. We're documenting the process of buying land, building houses. We're in framing stage on building this house. Uh, today, we got a little bit of weather. Uh, it was raining uh, consecutively this morning, so the framers aren't here today. So uh, good news for us is we can do this without uh, hammers going in the background, saws, and we can do it with a little bit more noise free. Now, right now in frame stage, when we're going vertical, one of the biggest things that you want to know is when your window package comes in, when your garage doors comes in, your trusses, and when you actually close off the house. One of the things that we do is to prevent theft and to also prevent cluster on the job sites is when we start the framing of the house, we actually bring in what's called the plate and wall package. So when you go in and you get your bids on your framing package, they will section it off by wall packages, plating packages, your sheeting package, uh, your decking package, your truss package, and they're all different pieces to the puzzle. Now, the biggest thing that you need to know that when you come out and you first drop your lumber package, and you first start building your walls, you want all of your wall package and your plate package. Your plat plate package is all the green wood for wood rot that goes on the base of everything that you guys are, that you're framing. So anytime you guys go in and you're doing your plates, your plating package is all your green wood. This is all your pressure treated uh, lumber uh, for wood rot. So it all goes on, on the plating. Now, I won't bring out any of the sheeting until the second delivery. Once we come out, and we start doing our, our second delivery, we'll bring out all of our sheeting. The sheeting goes in once all the walls are up. This is also what shears the house together. You guys will see that we're reinforcing the house. We've got a lot of bracing going on right now. It's because we haven't done the, the roof line. Once we tie everything together with the trusses and the roof line, the house anchors itself together. But right now, we want to make sure that none of the walls, if there's heavy winds, come in and fold in. So we'll come in and we'll brace everything. And now all this bracing lumber, one of the big concerns when I first started building is like, what do you do with it after the bracing is gone? Do you just throw it away? And the answer is no. We use all of the bracing lumber for backing. We'll build our fireplaces out of it. We'll build all our accents out of it. And we'll use all of this for, uh, for backing for sheetrock later on down the road. So none of it will go to waste. All of it will get utilized. The amount of scrap lumber that we utilize on a build is very minimal. What we want is we want leftover lumber at the end of construction so that all that lumber that's left over, we call the lumber company. They land up loading all that stuff off, hauling it back over to their plant, and then we land up getting a credit. And we usually pay a little restocking fee, but you also never want to be short on lumber. You always would rather have more lumber on site than not enough because you never want your framer standing waiting because then they'll land up leaving the job sites and then it, it bottlenecks and your build and slows the entire process down. So you want to try to prevent that in any way possible. Uh, now, once we come out and we do our sheeting package, then we come in and we'll do all of our trusses. Now, when our trusses come out, we also want our decking package. The decking package is more of the plywood that goes up on the deck, that goes up on the deck and the top of the trusses. Now, the trussing package will usually come out on a house like this. It's 2,500 square feet under air and total square footage is someplace around 4,000 square feet with all the garage space, porches, uh, heated area, everything. Uh, you'll get all the trusses to come out. So one of the big things, now we get all our trusses delivered out, we get all our decking brought out, and then we uh, we take off all our bracing and stuff once all the decking comes in. And then we'll start building our parapet walls that go above it. Uh, these trusses don't have the parapets on them, so these will actually have to be built. The parapets will actually have to be built on top of these ones uh, for the garage. Now, we do got some trusses over here that actually have the parapets built onto them. These are the parapets right here they go above the roof line. So that this will actually be the base of your truss. So the truss will actually sit going this way on top of the roof line. This will come up and then stucco will go on the exterior facade over the top and then back down. And then this will actually be your finished roof line right here. This is just to cover everything up. It looks a lot more attractive, especially down here in the Southwest. Where we do a lot of uh, more Southwestern Pueblo style homes. Um, we use the parapet walls to make them look round like the old Adobe walls back in the days. Now, let's go through a few things here. A few questions that the framers are going to ask you. They're going to ask you, how deep do you want your garage doors? Do you want them to sit flush or do you want them inset? And so if you notice how we did the concrete here, we do this so that the doors go down, water doesn't flow in, but we want a deep set garage door. 
We want the garage door to be deep set into this framing. And the reason why is this looks way more attractive when the exterior facade wraps around these corners and comes in and the door sits here and then the door can sit all the way down. So when we do the inset on the slab, we actually have the inset sit inside of it. So when the door comes down, the garage door sits down here, no water flows in and we have an attractive finish uh, to the actual exterior facade. Now, when we come in and we do the window sets, we'll typically double frame. We'll do the exact same thing on the inset of these windows. Instead of having the windows sit flush right here, we could do one of two things. We could either have them sit right in the middle or we can have them set on the inside. A lot of times on these ones, it's nice to have a little bit of a ledger where these actually wrap around and the window sits right here. And then this part right here, they actually um, sit with a flange that goes in the middle and it just looks a lot more attractive to have this kind of sit halfway in, this part sit halfway in. Now, the framers actually framed this one wrong. This is gonna have to get redone. We actually had what's called a six inch reveal um, around this, ha this, this portion. The reason that these walls are double framed in the front isn't because we need them. There's no structural integrity to them. It's more for an, an accent. And the way they have them framed right now, it does absolutely nothing for the accent. So we're gonna have them actually frame these back, do a six inch reveal all the way around these, inset the windows. So when the, when the wood comes in, it's gonna look a lot more attractive. Um, now this does add a little bit to the lumber framing package, but on this, on this caliber of home that's selling for $830,000, $850,000, it just looks so much more attractive. We don't do this around the entire home, but on the front of the house for curb appeal, when people drive by, it sure does make a huge difference on the exterior finished facade of the house and the curb appeal from the road. Just makes it look like a lot more expensive home, um, gives it a lot more design contour and uh, dimension to the house and the exterior trim just looks a lot more attractive. So we'll do this on our front walls only. The back windows we'll do like any other home where a little bit more flush mount or just what's called a, a four inch inset where that way you can get a little bit of a reveal on there. One of the big things when we set these houses is where's the doorway gonna sit in conjunction to the views? We have the open doorway. When you walk through, one of the biggest things to sell these houses in this area is the mountain views. And so when you come through and you, you walk in right now, you can't see the mountain views today because the mountain views are obscured with clouds, but these big, massive windows are gonna give us just straight mountain views once we walk in the house. Now, this is the entertainment and fireplace area right here. What we land up doing right now is we do an eight foot stretch along the base here, because we'll end up doing a 72 inch fireplace that's long right through here. And you could drop the fireplace all the way down to the base. The reason this doesn't have anything in it yet is because we haven't given the framers the dimensions of how the fireplace is actually gonna sit. So we'll end up coming in on each side of the wall, 12 inches, and then we'll end up with this long um, horizontal fireplace. It's just really attractive, probably only 24 inches tall. We'll bring it up 24 inches off the ground. And then up above it, we'll have a huge entertainment area up here where the actual TV sits right up in this area, and we'll actually frame an indented area for the actual big screen television that sits in here. And then we'll do some low end, uh, some low end benches on the low end over here. If the windows don't exist, we land, we land up doing bookshelves up here, but because we do have windows on here, this will be extremely attractive uh, for the exterior facade. Now, that's important for the framers. You're gonna wanna get dimensions from your fireplace company. Before you get your uh, frame inspection, you have to do your roof penetrations and your fireplace. So in the next video, I'll explain and show that to you. Another thing to take into account is where your heating and cooling system is going to come and where your ducking is going to be. And so a lot of times we'll talk to the framers and I'll actually have the heating and cooling guys come out. So for those of you guys that are building new for the first time, just know that the framers need to talk to the heating and cooling guys when we're talking about where the return airs and the ducking are going to come in so that that way we have a plan for the heating and cooling guys. Typically those guys will work it out amongst each other. The only thing that I'm looking for is there's no exposed ducking and I don't have to do what's called fur downs on my ceilings. I want to make sure that when we finish the actual houses that um, they look clean. Uh, a lot of remodeled houses, they don't uh, account for ducking and stuff when you're updating heating and cooling systems will have fur downs around some of the roof lines. We don't want to do that. We want to try to prevent that um, because they just look so much more attractive uh, when you come in and the roof lines are super clean. So one of the things that we'll do is we'll come in and uh, when we design and develop and build the houses, we'll set them so that that way all of the ducking and stuff is done in advance. Um, one of the other uh, components that we'll talk about is the, is the roof line transitions. We land up going from like a 16 foot ceiling in the entryway to a 14 foot ceiling here in the family rooms 
these 14 foot ceilings come down to a 10 foot ceiling going into all of our bedrooms. <laughs> so when we come into our bedrooms, how does that transition look? Do we use beams? Do we want it framed? Are we doing a modern style house? And so we'll work with the framers to make sure that we get the finished trim out that we're looking for on every single home. Uh, another thing that you want to pay attention to in the frame stage is your doors. Uh, one of the things that most people make a mistake on is how their doors are going to sit. So we'll usually at, at frame stage have our door company come out and measure all of our doorways at this, at this stage of the game right now. We'll usually call them, come out and measure every single doorway throughout. Most houses will have about 20, about 20 doors interior on a house this size. They'll fluctuate from about 18 doors to about 25 doors, depending on how many closets you have, how many bathrooms you have, how many bedrooms you have. But that's what you will have as far as interior doors. And then we'll come out and we'll have a measure them because sometimes the doors don't swing the right way. You miss it on the architecture. And um, this is the, is the stage where you want to catch some of that stuff. So if the framers have to make any modifications to how the doors are going to sit, they do it now in the frame stage. So super, super important. Um, outside of that, ladies and gentlemen, um, we'll talk to them about how the showers are going to be framed. We'll talk to them about uh, the windows. You'll want to make sure that you have available for your framers at frame stage your window ledger. Um, on the last house that we uh, that we were framing, one of the big things that uh, that we did not realize on the window package that there was one window missing on the tower so we had to order it after the fact so we'll put a temporary piece of plywood over it until the actual window comes in and then we'll end up putting that window in and it does happen you know there's a lot of moving parts to the build um, and even those of us with experience will miss that stuff sometimes we're busy with other with other projects and it's easy to oversight one window on a house so when you do it don't freak out don't panic there's always a way just get it ordered get it put um, get it ordered and on its way get everything else moving forward. And then ultimately, it's nice to have all of them at one time. But if you miss it, it's okay. You come in, put it in later. The framers will always have a little bit of this, that, and the other to come back and do at some point in time. So when they do come back and do some repair items, when the inspection happens, they can mount the window and uh, seal it up and continue moving forward with your build without any hiccups. Ladies and gentlemen, we're buying land, we're building houses, we're documenting the process for you guys. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, we are in video number five. You guys are going to want to go back, watch video number one and two, which I'm going to recommend at the tail end of this video. If you want more content just like this, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up button. God bless, and let's go out and crush it. Go out and compound your success. Okay.